In the film The Matrix, the character of Cypher eventually betrays his fellow crew members aboard Morpheus' vessel, the Nebuchadnezzar. He's fed up of the bleakness of the real world. Being outside of the virtual construct of The Matrix begins to take its toll on him. Bad food, awful living conditions, scavenging to survive against the machines, it's all a little bit too depressing for Cypher. So he decides to meet with Agent Smith, who wants the access codes to the Zion mainframe, something only Morpheus knows. Cypher agrees to re-enter the Matrix, to be given a new life as someone important, someone rich, like an actor. In exchange, he'll bring Morpheus to Agent Smith. At one point in the film, Cypher tells Morpheus that if he had been honest about the real world, that he would have told him to shove the red pill up his ass. Cypher wants to remember nothing about the real world when he goes back into the Matrix. As he sits in a fancy restaurant in the presence of Agent Smith, eating a steak dinner, which he knows isn't real, he explains that after nine years of living outside the Matrix, he realizes that ignorance is bliss. In essence, Cypher wants to retake the blue pill and live in ignorance of the truth. He wants to go back to believing the lie because the lie was comforting. The painful truth of existence was too much for him to bear. The red pill is obviously a metaphor for the epiphany people experience when they realize that they've been lied to about aspects of the world around them. They begin to discern truth from illusion. However, the red pill isn't necessarily for the faint of heart. Some truths are quite painful, and once you see the world for what it is, there's no going back. Or is there? In many respects, Cypher makes for the most interesting character in the film, because he's the most flawed and offers an interesting counterpoint to the other protagonists. Perhaps he's lost hope in the future, or he no longer believes in the fight against the machines. He doesn't see a way to win, and he certainly doesn't see how the present situation aboard the Nebuchadnezzar is any better than living in blissful ignorance in the Matrix power plant. At least if you're in the Matrix and you believe that it's the real world, you don't have to worry about your subjugation because you don't know that you're actually being subjugated. In one scene in The Matrix, Neo is lying on his bed having a conversation with Morpheus. He's feeling pretty low and he says the following. I can't go back, can I? No. But if you could, would you really want to? So would you really want to go back to believing in the comforting lies that you once believed? Is it even possible? I don't believe so. I think when you've passed the Rubicon, that's it. Yeah, it could be possible that you could go back to try to live a regular life, being a good little tax-paying consumer, but now that you're aware of the media lies on television, the narratives of the mainstream media, the agendas of certain global political players, you're going to notice them day to day in your life in some respect, and you can't go back to not noticing them anymore. For example, the realities of modern feminism are often one means by which some people begin their red pill journey into other various political discussions, and from there they begin to tumble down the rabbit hole and discover other ideas regarding things like political correctness or other pressing topics. If you take something relatively minor like the wage gap, which can be one introduction to the red pill, once you know the truth, you can't go back to believing this lie ever again. No matter how much you wish you could return to Normieville, you know that this narrative about the wage gap isn't true, and you can prove it to other people with logic and basic math. So when you hear it regurgitated over and over again on television, you know better than the sleeping masses who hear it and don't question it. The same would be true of most other mainstream narratives. I will admit that some red pill and black pill content can be a bit depressing at times, which is why I think it's very important that people find other like-minded folks to talk to about this stuff in the real world, as it's a great way to keep positive. But I don't believe that people regret being red-pilled. And the reason is because political correctness is a prison for the mind. And when you realize that, you immediately feel more free because you can separate fact from fiction. It gives you a modicum of control over your own destiny because you can choose to reject the programming once you learn to identify it. I think the phrase that sums it up for me is, you can deny reality, but you can't deny the consequences of denying reality. 
Choosing to reject truth is only going to lead to problems down the line. Burying your head in the sand and pretending like everything is fine is not going to be a successful long-term strategy. The red pill exposes the problems of the world that you didn't even realize were there, and the future manifestations of those problems and the outcomes that result from them will happen regardless of whether you choose to deny the truth or not. I look forward to your comments below. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.